probably cold. Amy wants us to turn on the heat. You're comfortable. Ephesians 1, 15 through 22. Are you ready? Ephesians 1, 15 through 22. This is a really powerful prayer in Ephesians. It's the second half of it. It says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. Somebody said that with me, that the eyes of my understanding may be enlightened which also means open, okay? Um, that you may know the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Amen? It says, the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. The exceeding greatness of God's power toward us who believe. What Paul is doing here is he's like, I, I'm praying that your eyes would be opened. The eyes of your wisdom, of, of God's wisdom, the eyes of his knowledge, the eyes of of your understanding would be opened. Amen? That's what he's saying. He's saying, I need you to realize a couple things here. And he starts out by saying that you may know, somebody say no, the hope of his calling. Now, if you look up the Greek word for hope, it can also be translated confidence, calling of salvation. And if you look up the word um, Knowing, <laughs> this means having this connection, that you may know um, the hope of his calling, right? So the hope of his calling, that you would know what really happened when you got saved. Amen? That you would know who you are in Christ. We just did a whole message on this, so I'm not going to, a whole message series on this, so I'm not going to go there. He says, so that your eyes would be open so that you would know who you are in Christ. Has anybody ever here woke up and you feel like you're not saved when you woke up in the morning? Okay, good. Just a few people. Has anybody here during the day you said something and you did something and you think, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I'm saved. You feel like that. You feel like, I'm like why would I do that? I want to let you know that that's normal. Amen to feel like maybe you're not saved. But it's not based off of how we feel. It's based off of what Jesus did on the cross for us. That you would know what Jesus did on the cross for you. What did he really do? He wasn't just a man who died and then a group of people just followed him. What was accomplished at that cross was your salvation. My friend Tom, I just found out this morning that Tom passed away. And I wonder what it's like for him right now. Every week he preached salvation. Well, not every week, but he preached about salvation a lot. You know, he came, he, would, he came to me when he first came into the city. He said, my name is Tom. Um, I heard about your church, and I just, I want to support you in any way we can. What can we do to help? He would show up and give clothing or show up with a check and give into our outreaches. That was his heart. What's it like for him right now to be in heaven rejoicing. He's in a lot better place than we are, isn't he? To know. Amen? What was accomplished? Us, someday, when we're old, we go to heaven. Isn't that great? How many of you guys have some people in heaven waiting for you? Amen. The hope of his calling. You know, the hope of his calling is being able to be forgiven of sin. What a good thing that is. Amen? How hard is it to work with somebody that just doesn't want to forgive you for stuff. Isn't that hard? God's not like that. He wants to forgive you. That's the hope of your calling. Amen? Being confident in your salvation. Amen? 
He says, I want your eyes to be open, to be confident in your salvation. So I'm going to ask you today, how many of you guys are saved and someday going to heaven? Could you please put your hand up? Awesome. How many of you guys are saved and you know you're going to heaven? Put your left hand up. Now, if you've been with me very long, you know what I'm going to do next. How long have you been saved and you know salvation and you're confident of it on the count of three scream? One, two, three. Okay. Now, if your first response was, uh, you may not be confident in your salvation, but you can be. Amen? Because of what Jesus did on that cross. Somebody say, yeah. So he says, I want your eyes to be open to who you are in Christ. Forgiven. Free, pure, holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I'm saved. I'm saved. Hallelujah. Good. And then he says that you may know the riches of his glory. He says, I want your eyes to be open to the hope of your calling and the riches of his glory. Now, riches obviously means in abundance. Glory, which is interesting, means two things. The high opinion of and the things that belong to God. Amen. Glory, the high opinion of and the things that belong to God. God has a high opinion of you. How does that happen? Amen? God has a high opinion of me. And then the riches of his glory. Amen? Revelation that what, that of who you are, but what you have in Christ. Amen? Now let's just say, whose water bottle is this? This one right here. Well, this one looks more pretty. This one's yours. Did you say this one's yours? This is your water bottle? It's not his water bottle? Are you sure? I like this water bottle. It says Arise. Early detection is their best protection. Okay. Arise ink down. This is a cool water bottle. All right, so it's yours, right? Now, I know your personality, and you're perfect for this. What would happen if I came and like, you know what? Give me that. What are you going to do? Oh, jeez. Well, then you're a bad example. Um, <laughs> faith. You're a good example. That's not what I meant. <laughs> See, this is pastor school 101, what you don't do in the middle of a message. That's what we just did. <laughs> now, let's see. That's Faith's water bottle. Now, I know Faith's her personality. She's very competitive. She has, she's a lot like her mom and her dad They're, when it comes to cards and things like that. Just very, this is mine, and you can't have it, which is good because it's yours. You can choose to give it away, but if I came up and tried to take it, I know you. You're going to stick it in your arm like this and run down the street with it like it's a football, okay? <laughs> because it's yours, right? Perfect. All right, awesome. I, I have to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> I told you she'd be a great example. Who you are in Christ, what God gave you, amen? How many of you guys know God wants to keep you healed up? That's yours. Somebody say that's mine. See, how many of you guys know that God wants to provide for you? How many of you guys know that's yours? Somebody say that's mine. All right, so the Bible says the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. What's not his, what's yours? And if you know who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ, when he comes to steal what you have, you'll make a stand and say, no way, devil, that's mine. Christ gave it to me. Who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ. Amen? Um, I love that scripture in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4. It says, his divine power has given us all things. Somebody say all things. That pertain to life and godliness. And I've preached this word before, but I'll go quickly. All things that pertain to life. How many of you guys know there are some things that you have to have to be alive? Let's start with something very important. Air. If the air got sucked out of this earth, we would all be flipping around on the ground like fish trying to get air. Not to be whatever. We need air. And God provides us with air. How about food? We need food. If you don't eat, you will die. The Bible says that God is a great Father who provides for that. Amen? How about water? Shelter. <laughs> Shelter. You're getting better. <laughs> Shelter. Amen? And, and, and God speaks, and Jesus speaks in Matthew and talks about, don't, don't worry how God takes care of the birds of the air. He takes care of the, the flowers and the grass. God takes care and provides all that for them. And then he said, oh, I'm going into a different scripture. I'll come back later too. So, um, so life, and then here is godliness. See, the point of being a Christian 
is not just about going to heaven, but manifesting heaven in the earth. It's not all about just going to heaven. It's about taking heaven and bringing it here, right? And God wants us to be more like him every day, to be like God, all right? So the thing, you know, what are, when I think, just real quick, let's discussion just for fun. First attribute of God that you think of. What, do, what is God like? God, what is God? What's he like that speaks most to you? Put your hand up and go ahead and tell me. Love. Yes, Eileen. Lo uh -oh. Love. God is love. Right? Good. What else? What's that? Friend. Awesome. What else? What? What's that? Patience. Ooh, that's one I don't want to talk about. No, just kidding. Patience. Another one. Karen. Forgiveness. Pastor Dennis. Holy. Another one over here. Yes, Julie. Faithfulness. Ooh, it's a good one. See, God wants to make us more like him so that we can be more loving and lovable, more patient, more holy, more kind, more gracious, more forgiving, a promise keeper. All right, so how many of you guys ever felt like I just don't feel like a most patient person today, or I just don't feel like I've got any joy today, or I just don't feel like I can love this person today, or I just feel like I don't have enough grace for this, for this thing today. God provides it. His divine power has given us all we need for life. Somebody say life. Oh, I can't hear you. Somebody say life. And what? Godliness. Somebody say godliness. See, God empowers you to be provided for, but God also empowers you to be like him. Amen? All right. And um, which is given to us through his great and exceeding promises. All right? Would you guys think I was crazy if I went downstairs? I said, oh, my gosh, i got to check my email. I go downstairs, and I get a car stereo, or I get a stereo, one of the older stereos that gets doing it. I bring it up. I'm like, why won't this thing give me my email? I could plug it in, I could mess with the antenna, but it's not going to give me email. Do you know why it's not going to give me email? Because it was never set up to receive email. It was set up to receive FM and AM signals, right? What if I went to the copier and I'm like, I'd love to listen to the radio. What is wrong with this thing? See, you can't get the radio out of a copier and you can't get email from a radio. You're like, how are you going to tear this together? This is going to be interesting. See, the way that you receive from God is through his promises. Amen? Through his great and precious promises. All right? And it says all things. What's that? Meaning for life and godliness. And then to the scripture in Matthew 7, 7 through 12. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Well, what man is there among you? If he asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is heaven give good gifts to men? It's a question. Why would Jesus ask that question? How much more? If you know how to give good gifts, how much more? I don't think I could think of a single person here that if a child came up to you on the street, and said, I haven't eaten all day. I just need something to eat. I believe that you guys would find a way to feed him. And I bet you guys would be probably pretty compassionate about the fact that here's a child on the streets of Oneida who's not being provided for, and I want to help him. Do you know where that comes from? That comes from the heart of the Father that's in you. Because that's how God feels about you. Have you ever been afraid to ask somebody because they may not answer you or you even have the right answer? I'm not asking that question. When I was in school, elementary school, they did this thing where, what do you, you know, raise your hand if you, you have the answer. Or if you have any questions, you can ask me. I would never ask. Why? Because I didn't think or was thought that I would get an answer. It's hard to ask somebody if you don't think you're going to get an answer. Amen? How about seek? 
Why would you look for somebody that can't be found? What a waste of time. Right? We have these two beautiful kittens in our house. Lord, help me pray. Neo and Mittens. We couldn't find them. Any, they're little. They hide in the, they were behind the washer and the dryer. I was like, I don't want to go looking for them because I'm not sure I can find them. I went to meet somebody this week at their house that I've, I maybe met one time. And they gave me their address. And when I walked up on the door to knock, I thought, I hope they live here. I'll just knock. <laughs> A little insecure. If I knew he lived there, what would I do? <laughs> Same thing happens at my door upstairs. Sue will come if he's not sure what I'm doing. If he'll listen for the phone, he'll go. But if he knows I'm in there and I'm free, he's like, Jeff, you there? He says, knock. Right? So Jesus is saying, ask. Somebody say ask. Seek, somebody say seek, and he says knock. And then the last thing that you is know. You can ask, you can seek, you can knock, and you can know that your Father will provide for you through his great precious promises through his Bible. Amen? And then it says, and I'm almost done, his exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. Exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. By the way, um, next week I'm going to continue with the message on hearing the voice of God. But I wanted to get this one in here this week. I shared this example last week. I want to share it again. On the morning of August 27th, 1883, ranchers in Alice Springs, Australia, heard what sounded like gunshots. The same mysterious sound was reported in 50, somebody say 50, that's a lot, geographical locations spanning one, ter one thirteenth of the globe. What they heard was the eruption of a volcano on a remote Indonesian island 2,233 miles away. That volcanic eruption, possibly the loudest sound ever measured, was so loud that the 310 decibel sound waves went around the globe at least four times. That's powerful. It generated 3,000 foot tidal waves. It threw rocks a distance of 34 miles. It cracked one foot thick concrete 300 miles away. If you, were to dig a dr if you were to drill a hole directly through the center of the earth, all the way to the bottom, you would find Columbia. And although the sound of the eruption wasn't audible in Columbia, it was still measurable through atmospheric pressure. An infrasonic sound. That's powerful. Would you agree that's powerful? But it wasn't powerful enough to raise Jesus from the dead. It wasn't powerful enough to raise Lazarus from the dead. It isn't power enough to heal somebody. It's not enough power. But the Bible says that God has great power toward us who believe. Now the question is this. Believe what? Believe who you are in Christ and believe what you have in Christ. So that means as Christians... That's where the devil's going to hit you, with who you are and what you have in him. Amen? After, this isn't my message, but I'll give it to you for free. After Adam and Eve had sinned, right, they're walking around, and God's calling out for Adam, and Adam says, hey, wait a second, you know, I'm naked. God's question was, who told you you're naked? It's an interesting question. See, God doesn't ask questions unless it's important. All right? So let me ask you this. What if you feel like, you know what? I'm a failure. You know what God's response is to that? Who told you you're a failure? I feel lost. Who told you you're lost? I'm this person that is addicted to this, that, and the other thing. Who told you that? See, your identity is not in what you do. Your identity is in who you are. So God says, who told you that? Because that's a lie from the enemy. The devil will attack your identity in Christ. You have to know who you are. Amen? And then the other thing, the devil's just kind of dumb when it comes to this. 
stuff. You want to, it's the same old thing over and over and over again. But you know what? He gets us sometimes. When Adam and Eve, um, when Eve was talking to the serpent, right? Um, the serpent said, Eve said, well, we, can, we have this, we have that, we have this and we have that, but we, are, we don't have that. We're not able to eat from that tree. Right? What was the devil's response? What did God really say? What you have in Christ. Did God really say you can be healed? Did God really say that he could provide for you? Did God really say that he'll take care of you and that he'll love you no matter what? Did God really say that he forgives you and has grace for you? That's where the devil will get us. And that's why Paul was saying this. I pray that your eyes would be open to who you are in Christ. I pray that your eyes would be open to what you have in Christ. Why? Why? So that we'll allow God to provide for us, and then we can also be a blessing to others. Some things take a lot of power. Amen? Some things take a lot of power. I'll never forget, I had a, when I was a kid, my grandfather was a jazz musician, and he had this big bass amp. I mean, it was, it was big. It was 150 watts. Now, for a kid, that's a lot of watts back in the 80s, okay? I know for you guys, that's nothing. But for a kid, 150 watts is a lot of watts back in the 80s, okay? So I got this bass amp, and then my mom bought me the, this wonderful, for Christmas, boom box. You ever seen those big boom boxes? They had three speakers. It's about this big, and you walk down the street like this with it. I saw somebody doing that the other day with a Bluetooth device. I thought, it's just wrong. It's not big enough. And I took that big boom box, and I thought, there's a lot of volume in this boom box. What would happen if I took this boom box and I plugged it into this amp and I turned it 75% up? What would happen? I hit the play button and I knocked out the breakers in my bedroom. Too much power. <laughs> Amen? It needed more power. Some things take a lot of power. And the only power that we can rely on is God's great power. Somebody say God's great power. Amen. So you might be thinking, boy, I don't know if I'm ever going to overcome this in my life. Well, you are because of God's great power. Amen. I don't know how this is going to work out in my life. I can because of God's great power. Somebody say God's great power. I believe that God's great power will equip us to build that kitchen. I believe it. I believe that God has the power to speak to you, to speak to me, and to speak to our community for that kitchen. And I believe that many people are going to be touched and changed through that kitchen. God's great power. So you can expect the devil to attack us to stop that from happening. And where is he going to get you? With who you are and what you have. I just, I feel so crappy about my life right now. I just, oh, can't even get into church. I don't have enough. God will take care of it. And somebody say, yeah. yeah. Amen. You've received an inheritance. Amen. From God. You can know that God is bigger. You can trust in his exceeding great power. Now, as I end, I want to ask you guys this. How many of you guys are trusting and believing God for some pretty, pretty big breakthroughs in your life? Amen. How many of you guys are, are trusting and believing in God to be changed and to be more in his likeness? Amen. And how many of you guys know that it's not you who's going to do it, but it's him in you. How many of you guys know that it's going to have to be God? Because there's definitely nothing you could do. <laughs> what? Excuse me, I wish I wore a belt, but if I put both my hands up like this. <laughs> Amen? We'll end with this. So, Jesus died, he rises again. 
the disciples go and um, a baptism of the Holy Spirit happens. The church explodes. And all of a sudden, um, the Pharisees and Sadducees who were upset with one supposedly man who was really the son of God, who was going around with a small group of people healing people, right? All of a sudden, it explodes. And now not only do you have one man who was fully God and fully man, but you have the 12 disciples who's now expanded to literally thousands of people, Right? And the Pharisees and the Sadducees this is an Acts. They look at the disciples, and this is what they say. These are uneducated men. They're just fishermen. Who gets all the glory for that? It could have been Peter. Couldn't have been. He's just a fisherman. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Amen? So that's okay. If you're not, you feel like you're not equipped, you are through Christ. And guess who gets all the glory? God does. His great power. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for our whole congregation today. Lord, I pray that you would increase our capacity, Father God, to be who you've called us to be. Lord, I pray that you're able to increase our capacity to love more people at a deeper level. I pray, Lord, that you would increase our capacity, Lord, in ourselves, in our faith, to believe you for the big things that you want to see happen. Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, that we can trust you in every way. And I've said that a lot today, Father God. Lord, for all the things that people are going to you in their life, I thank you, Lord, that your great power is more than enough. I pray, Father God, that you would continue to grow our church, that people would see our love for one another. I pray, Lord God, that you would give us opportunities to believe you for great things and that our community, our friends, our family would see that it's not us, but it's you in us and that they would believe in a great God, Father God, because of the things that you're accomplishing right here in this church. We thank you and praise you that you're faithful. Amen. Amen. All right, well, why don't you all stand up? And we'll go out with a praise song. Say this with me. Say, we're a church. That's really hot right now. Just kidding.